Darren Morning, um, the, often a prime minister will get a bit of a bounce by having being shoulder to shoulder with the president of the United States, the leader of the free world. But to be honest, Rishi Sunak's going to be with him just for a few minutes and it's already descended into a joke about is it a bilateral or is it a, a latte? Because he's just having coffee with him. Yeah, indeed, but it is interesting, though, that Rishi Sunak has made a concerted effort uh, to try and associate himself with Joe Biden. He turned up at the airport last night to greet him off Air Force One, and as you say, he's having this kind of almost brush by um, the technical term for a very brief chat uh, this morning. The Prime Minister didn't need to come uh, to Northern Ireland to make that effort. He clearly felt that he needed to. Now, why is that? Well, as the first... Oh, sorry, it's the third meeting he's had with Joe Biden since he became Prime Minister. And he's only been Prime Minister for six months, and that's pretty good going, I would suggest. Mm. And I think it's fair to say that actually both men thus far get on pretty well. I mean, they spend an hour in the same room together with no officials when they met in San Diego, uh, what, just a month or so ago, uh, over that uh, uh, AUKUS deal. And also, I think there has been a concerted attempt by Dynasty to repair relations with uh, the White House. They frankly have not been terribly good uh, since particularly Brexit, it is fair to say that the Americans have kind of essentially felt, uh, and we know this during the Obama administration, certainly, that, that the Brexit was a mistake. Uh, Boris Johnson failed to capitalise on the relationship with uh, Donald Trump. So Rishi Sunak is trying again, and it seems somewhat uh, successfully. But in saying that, I think, as you guys have alluded to, he is frankly in Northern Ireland for 18 hours. Now, that, let's be honest about that. That is, frankly, largely Northern Ireland's fault. We do not have a government here. There is no executive for all the reasons that we know are available. It is fair to say that if politics was back to normal here, Joe Biden will be spending a hell of a lot more time in Northern Ireland. But yes, the focus of his trip is clearly on the rest of Ireland. He's meeting his ancestors a little later on uh, today and indeed later on in the week in two counties in the Republic of Ireland, spending most of his time in Dublin, including addressing both houses of Parliament uh, the Irish Parliament down there and having a state banquet with the Irish president. Let's remind people that there are tens of millions, I think 40 million Americans who associate themselves with Ireland who think they've got Irish heritage. And for a man who may well be seeking re-election, that's one hell of an electoral base to try and win over next time rounds. I would just say finally, Dan, that's going to put the union's nose a bit out of joint, isn't it? Addressing yeah, both, isn't it? Yeah. both houses of parliament in Ireland, a, a state banquet, but spending barely an hour with the, with the union's politicians Having a this cup morning, of coffee. Having a coffee. Yeah, I, I think so. But, you know, Joe Biden was invited to speak to Stormont and to the Assembly, but he turned that down because, well... It doesn't really exist, does it? I mean, and there is a frustration here. You know, you talk to people in Northern Ireland, and, and Dougie's right, this is not Bill Clinton in 1995, and this place is used to seeing US presidents. They've all visited, apart from Donald Trump, in the last uh, 20 years. Even George W. Bush was here twice as president. There are very few people on the streets. There's not many people terribly excited about this visit. But what I would say is there is a frustration here uh, amongst all sections of the community that Stormont is not up and running. And I do suspect that while the DUP, particularly at the moment, is resisting returning into government, there are local elections, let's not forget this, in May. There's clearly concern about how the Windsor framework may play out in terms of those local elections with the support for the DUP, which has slipped in recent years. Once those elections are out of the way, I think there'll be a proper rethink within unionism, particularly within the DUP, about getting Stormont up and running again. Because I say, irrespective of what people think, at the end of the day, people here do want local politicians making those local decisions.